at the Namak swap meet on October 1st, uh, there were several uh, French sellers. Uh, I asked one of them who was selling uh, vintage majorat if there is still a uh, majorat to be found in France. Um, and he said no. Um, the reason I asked him that is because I'm looking for uh, majorat, vintage majorat for a friend. And I was going to France the next day. So um wasn't very hopeful since he said that. Um, where was I going? I was going to the 11th swap meet in Auchel, a uh, small town in the north of France, uh, at an uh, old-timer meet organized by Les Ch'tis Pistons. I was uh, number 14 to enter. It was pretty early uh, when it opened up. Um, sellers were still um, putting up their, uh, their stuff on the tables. There weren't that many sellers. Um, I got one loose vehicle. That's this uh, Norif Minijet Volvo F89. Uh, oh, here it is. The base says made in France. So this is a garbage truck from the uh, city of Paris. Vie propre, which means clean city. Um, Almost mint. It's got uh, a few uh, flea bites, paint chips. Unfortunately, the sticker is gone on this side. Seller was asking four euro. I was expecting France to be expensive, and uh, it turned out it was. Um, I offered him three, but uh, you know he wanted three and a half for it, so that's what I paid. Uh, but I've, I've never seen this variation of this truck. There's lots of uh, different variations of uh, the, the stuff in the back, I mean. In this case, it's a garbage truck, but there's a, we'll see another variation uh, later in this video. Uh, it was dirty, of course. I cleaned it up, but you can see by the sticker, that's the only thing I did not uh, clean up, obviously, because otherwise the sticker would probably be gone, how dirty it was. Uh, but yeah, still a cool find, and I'm uh, very pleased with it. There was also a seller who had a bunch of uh, Norev. Uh, they were all very dirty again, dusty inside and outside. Um, three euro for each and them, each and every one of them. Um, I inspected them thoroughly to um, to make sure I uh, I got good ones, and that was a good thing because there were several that were. Uh, missing a headlight or had scratches or paint missing so uh, I'm glad in hindsight I uh, I inspected these uh, thoroughly uh, so this is the Citroën C3 so bas basically what I did I had my uh, my list uh, with me and uh, I checked which uh, Citroën models I did not have an example of and that's the ones uh, that I got um, would have gotten a color variation of the C5 uh, station wagon, but uh, it was missing paint on the mirror. So this is metal on metals. Got that silly trailer hitch. Um, this is the one with the, the flat spot for the uh, the tr tow truck apparatus to fit on. Strangely enough, um, so we got taillights painted and the uh, Chevron logo in silver. Some black around the windows and the mirror, and then uh, these will all have lensed headlights because you know norev suspension authentic uh, rims plastic tires and some of these have a uh, opening part the older they are the more chance they have an opening part the newer they get they um, don't have an opening part anymore what what is strange here is that the taillights lift with the the hatch in the back if i remember correctly that was not the case on the real vehicle so it's kind of weird that they did that. I got a nice light gray interior, so um, that kind of looks good. The next one is in the wrong box. It says C4WRC, but that's not what is in here. That's it's a DS3 that is in here, so definitely not this uh, this vehicle. I did not uh, pay attention to that. Um, otherwise, I would maybe have asked to uh, 
switch with another box because he had a, a white and a black version of this car too and those were probably in the correct box but anyways it's not that important i keep the i can keep them in the window boxes but uh, you know um so as i said ds3 um back then they were still called citroen ds3 nowadays is ds is a separate brand Plastic base on this one is a little, little bit newer, but still has a little bit of suspension. Um, yeah, I like the the combo color combo on this one, the the dark gray metallic with the with the orange. Uh, that's kind of cool. Nicely detailed in the back. Uh, basically all around sweet and then got this uh, people carrier in a kind of uh, well either a gold or a metallic brown you choose what color it is uh, here we got uh, again that uh, trailer hitch Metal on metal. It's got a hatch or the lift gate that opens up. It only has a, a second, two rows of, well, not the third rows of seats in the back, uh, but you can see there's some stuff uh, on the wheel wells. Not going to put this one too far because um, I'm going to do a little comparison later on. Then uh, a few vans. This is a uh, kind of a window van, the Citroën Berlingo. Still metal on metal. Got a little bit of cladding here, detail on the side. That's nice. Sorry, I was looking at the car, not at the um, screen. Seems to be missing a pillar here for the sliding door. That's kind of a pity they did not include that. And also the uh, hatch opens up. I don't think there was an extra row of seats available for these. And then we get the uh, panel van version. So this is basically the first model uh, Berlingo, but the facelift or the uh, yeah phase two or whatever the French call that. Very nice and shiny base on this one. So basically the same as the other one, but a little less uh, metallic paint like the bumper and stuff because it's a van but it does have the seats in the back because they, they only have one interior for these castings this one you can clearly see the sliding door uh, and on the other one that was not that clear uh, and then the uh, only major stuff I found was this Majorette Transporter. Um, it says made in France on the box, but it's not made in France. Okay, so that's a lie. Um, so basically the only Majorette stuff I found there. A uh, seller wanted 33 euro. Left it there and then um, walked around the, the, the hall uh, to looking at the other stuff and then came back. I uh, asked him if he would accept 25, but he wouldn't, so he accepted 30. It's a little bit steep, I think, but, you know, I really wanted uh, uh, one of these older Majorette transporters. Uh, I asked him, these uh, cars all seem a little bit, you know, different of um, style of wheels and, and age. Uh, are you sure these are the correct cars for this set? And he uh, assured me that uh, they were. 
Um, so when I came home, I um, I looked it up. The uh, Corvette here, the black one, uh, was available in the main line from 1996 till 1997. The uh, Pontiac Firebird, fourth gen, uh, was available in 2002. This is the black interior variation. The Mercedes Benz 500 SL was uh, available from 2003 till 2004. And then the BMW M3 was available from 2000 till 2004. So let's say this is a 2003 release, then all these three vehicles could be in there, you know. First year for the SL. Um, sorry, no. Yes, this would be then uh, one from the year before, 2002. That's also possible. Uh, this was uh, second to last year of uh, production. So these could all have been, that's possible. But this one, 1996 till 1997, nah, I don't think so. Why would they have uh, a car lying around for um, for five or six years to put it in a um, in a transport set? I don't think so. Unfortunately, I could not find a picture online of this exact set. Uh, there's others with an older style uh, rig or tractor or lorry. Um, but uh, this specific one I could not uh, find. So I, I will, if you know this set, please let me know if this is uh, an accurate the vehicles that are in there. Uh, I have my doubts. That same seller was selling uh, Hot Wheels loan cards, American loan cards, um, from um, the early 2000s, or maybe 2000 to 2010, um, with all fantasy castings in it, and he was selling them for between 5 and 10 euro each. I kid you not. So... Pretty weird stuff, I must say. Also, one thing I noticed when I was looking up um, pictures of this is that in some cases um, there is actually a vehicle in here. You can see it fits like that. And then there's an extra vehicle here. So there's actually five vehicles in there. So that also makes me kind of wonder, is there one missing here or not? You know, it's all kind of, and also the vehicles, they don't really fit in the, the slots. They, they kind of want to fall out. Uh, they're not really, you know, this one, same thing. This one's kind of snug, but this one's definitely, this one definitely doesn't belong in here. So yeah, mysteries, mysteries. I think I got scammed. Um, the first time I ordered stuff on a French website, I got scammed. And now the first time ever I go to a swap meet in France, I get scammed again. You know, does that say something about the French? I don't know. So it's a Kenworth in 1 to 60 scale. You can see it does not say made in France. Um, yeah, there is suspension on these uh, on these wheels. Uh, not well, not so much in the front. I think they used to be, but these uh, these are pretty pressed up. These little springs, so they don't really function anymore. Um, there's a lot of plastic on this one. That's also a sign that this was uh, definitely not made in France. Uh, Basically, the this is kind of an American style truck, so let's call this a hood. It's metal, and then this front part of the cabin, back part like the the living part of the cabin is plastic, and then these um, the bottom part here, the bottom part of the bumper and these side skirts are plastic too. Uh, it's got a chrome interior for some reason, um, probably to give it. Uh, this chrome grill and the headlights, I guess. Although, no, these are part of the the metal chassis. So it does have a metal chassis. 
and then this is part of that metal chassis um, so yeah got the license plate there it says 1995 can 69 okay that's interesting would that 1995 mean this is a 1995 release so that would mean that the Corvette would be probably correct in there but then the other four sorry the other three uh, would be incorrect that's interesting that's really interesting hmm yeah we're discovering stuff here as we go along so maybe I got one good car and three wrong cars interesting trailer uh, majorette 1 to 60 scale also suspension on these back wheels too uh, it's got a little stand here so the silver part is metal and then the black part is plastic well except for this black part this one uh, slides out like that which uh, works really well look at that and then this kind of sits up like that and then this one just slides in there i guess click yeah there you go that's what it looks like so uh since i have too much stuff here on the table at the end of the video i'll put the cars on the uh on the car transporter and we can uh, take a look at uh, the whole thing together we do we will look at the cars first now so as you can see it doesn't say made in france so 1995 if that was or 1996 probably they were still producing in france maybe i'm not sure so that could be that originally there were made in france cars in there i'm not sure um so i got uh tampos on three sides the chevy bow tie is on the clip from the base it clips into the body yellow interior i uh, got a proper steering wheel opening doors click click nice sound suspension of course got those wide wheels so they kind of stick out a little bit on the side Here we've got the Mercedes 500 SL, so also metal on metal plastic bumpers. I think the hood or bonnet opens up. Yeah, got a little bit of detail underneath there, so it's not bad. Almost uh, better than we see uh, what we see nowadays uh, when it comes to engine detail. Vampire Deco, yeah, it would be strange if they put something with a vampire deco in the, in this set right that's my idea it's even got a mercedes star on the steering wheel look at that that's awesome nice then we got the pontiac firebird Kind of a racing livery so it's got the opening hood and still has the pin that holds the hood up so you kind of have to break that off to close it but i'm not going to do that i'm going to keep it like this so this is the black interior variation and then the bmw m3 plastic base So basically, tempo-wise, we get uh, just uh, the kidneys in the front. That's it. But to get a um, authentic steering wheel, just like the real car had. All in all, nice looking into your snap. Oh, the other one doesn't really snap that much. 
<clears throat> okay. Then on Friday, October 7, I went to my local supermarket and I found that they had Hot Wheels for $6.99. Usually uh, they are, I'm, I'm not sure what the, how much they are in that store, but around 10 euro, I guess. Um, most stores, these are 10 euro. Um, but this uh, supermarket named Colerite, when there's a store nearby that uh, has a lower price on something that they also sell, they uh, match the, uh, the price. So uh, there's a Kretvat store in the, the same street and they had five packs Hot Wheels five packs for $6.99 albeit the ones that Kretvat had were uh, those from last year and luckily for me the ones that uh, my local Colred has or had were new ones so this is a 2022 Nightburners five pack so one euro and 40 cents per car Unfortunately, there is a fantasy vehicle in here. It's not first time in the, the Nightburners pack, I think. Um, but, you know, not a fan. Oh, yeah, don't have to cut them anymore because there's, uh, there's a little uh, strip here that you can easily open. Uh, they must have been watching my videos and see me cut these off and think we are going to make it a little bit easier for him. Just kidding. Of course, they're not watching my videos. So, we got this thing, whatever it's called, Alpha Pursuit. Then we've got the 95 Mazda Savannah RX-7. Very cool casting. A little bit low on the yellow paint in the front there, on the spoiler. Kind of the Zamek uh, coming through. Very nice rear end. Look at that so nicely detailed um, yeah like it like it a lot here we got the 98 honda prelude yeah these are made in indonesia where the five packs are usually made lensed headlights part of the window piece sunroof whoops and again nicely detailed on the back no license plate or anything. We do get the Honda badge here in the front. We do get something. We don't get uh, the lights here down down there in the bumper. That's, uh, that's a bummer. But you know, it's a five pack model. They usually skimp on details. That's a 620. Very shiny chrome base. We get the chrome bumper in the front and the spoiler lip. And chrome bumper in the back. That's some embossed in the bed. Uh, lots of tampons on the side here and on the hood or bonnet. Sweet. And we got the McLaren Speedtail in a metallic purple. McLaren logo in the front, no headlights. Red stripe here on top. And then some red paint for the tail lights. And the uh, Speedtail name and McLaren just above that. Hard to see there on the leaf, leaf that uh, metal spoiler lip, but it's there. And of course, mismatched wheels as uh, this Cassie always has, or almost always. <clears throat> and then the other one I got uh, in uh, at the local supermarket is a 2023 Motor Show one. So, yeah, very pleased to find these. For what is nowadays an affordable price here in Europe. Last year I would not have uh, wanted to pay that for these but you know with the current inflation that's a good deal. 2016 Ford GT Race. Very nice metallic blue or metal flake blue. Uh, we got side deco and top deco. Don't like the blue window piece. Even got some exhaust detail. I think it's the first time I see exhaust detail on this casting, or maybe I have not been paying attention, I don't know. Ford badge is white, maybe because the vehicle is blue, they did that. White interior, so we get a white uh, wing on the back. Sweet. 
Unfortunately, there's also a uh, fancy casting in this one, the Crescendo. And here we got the Lamborghini Countach pace car. Uh, so instead of putting blue windows on the 4GT, they should have put in blue windows on this one. So we got the blue light bar. They got it all wrong. Uh, almost looks like the German flag on the car there, but uh, there's also gold and white, so. Base car, so three tempo sides, which is nice for a, for a five pack model, you know. Uh, it's got a chrome interior, so we get a little bit of chrome piece between the, the light bar and the, the exhaust also. Nineteen sixty seven four GT forty Mark Four. A nice silver again three tempo sides. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's got the lens headlights, very dark windows, so we get very dark lights here in the front. I would prefer them to be much lighter. But I think they're a little bit ashamed of their uh interior with uh, funny looking steering wheels so they try to hide that i get it i would do that too you know be embarrassed about that if i were them austin martin 177 uh, this one just gets a top deco see and then they let us down again they were doing so well oh well that's what it is nice casting I like the DBS better, but it's not bad. Then on Saturday, October 8th, I uh, visited the MCCF swap meet. MCCF stands for Model Car Collector Friends. So um, a lot of uh, other people there that I knew. Dykes dude was there too, so uh, I'll put a link to his video uh, whenever that appears uh, in the description description of uh, this uh, video, so you can check that out too if you uh, haven't already. Um, so let's start <clears throat> with uh, this one here: Opel Frontera with boat. Now this seller had a bunch of stuff that was pretty dirty had been in uh, uh yeah kind of a moist storage i think so the cars will uh, have some um, paint rash and stuff like that um he was asking two euro i got a little discount it's, there's a lot of dirt inside this packaging that's always a bad sign um, so I'm just going to open it next to me. Sorry about that. I know many of you like to see stuff be opened up on camera, but I don't want my whole table to be, uh, you know, <laughs> dirtied up by it. So Opel Frontera Sport. I think the Sport was the, the short version, if I can remember well. So it's got the lens headlights, got the Opel name in the grill that is tampoed uh, Frontera Sport on the side you can see some uh, paint rash there uh, oh, Frontera Sport on the uh, rucksack spare wheel in the back got the trailer hitch got the license plate plastic part here for the the roof part here and uh, also makes for the attachment of the boat uh, probably you can probably remove this and make it into a convertible like that. Yeah, it's also easy to uh, clean on the inside if it's dirty, but it seems to be pretty okay on the inside. Got a little sunroof and a lot of uh, paint bubbles on the bonnet, I should say, because I don't know, kind of like a, a voxel, right? This thing. Oh yeah, and the boat comes off too. Look at that. Um, it's kind of hard to get the roof piece back in there, it seems. Doesn't really want to. Okay, there it is. So this is roof piece without the boat. 
if the boat, the engine moves, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Just like the, the Majorette boat. Majorette had one of these two. Also moved. And then you just slide, slide it in there between these little things that stick out. Yeah, nothing really special and, you know, maybe not worth what I paid for it, but, you know, I thought it looked kind of cool. Uh, this whole row is from the same cellar, by the way, so all they were all very dusty and, uh, you know, kind of moisty. But this seems to be, uh, be kept a little bit better. Stars of Ger Germany Opel Speedster. This was a little bit more expensive, 250 I got it for 221 um, So this is the 2003 copyright, so probably 2004 set. So there were different uh, years of these sets so um the other ones i have have the pictures of the cars in the back so this is clearly different so yeah i want to open these up one day when i have all of them and do one video of these but that's going to take me many many years i think so just uh, some black tampos on the top for the grills there and that seems to be the only thing it gets tempo wise uh, eh, okay, that's what it is, I guess. And then the um, this set, the BP British Petroleum set. The, these cars were handed out at the uh, gas stations or fuel stations to customers in uh, the Netherlands and maybe also in uh, the Dutch-speaking part of Belgium in Flanders. I'm not sure. Um, these were also very dirty. They have crunched uh, blisters and then the cards are bent and, and stuff like that. So, you know, um, usually when I find these and these are pretty easy to come by uh, over here at each swap meet, there are several sellers who have a, a set lying on their table, uh, selling them for between 5 and 10 euro each. Um, this was also 2.5 euro and, you know, got the discount. So that was um, a great find, although some of these will have some paint rash, unfortunately. Um, each car got a, a specific bespoke card. So this is all in Dutch, obviously. Um, it gives a good description of the vehicle. So uh, if you want to read that, just uh, freeze the frame. If you can read Dutch or if you want to do some uh, Google translating, if you have lots, lots of time, uh, have at it. 1987 copyright. Um, I'm not sure. I did. I forgot to look up from what year this set uh, really is. is so uh, I could not really tell you. I'm looking at my, my uh, notes here, but I didn't write it down. Anyways. Opening this up because it's, you know, packaging is toast. It's not worth keeping in the packaging. So we got metal on metal. Nissan 300ZX Turbo, it says on the base. Suspension. Got um, three tempo sides on this. Red interior. With a disc for a steering wheel. Uh, see, back then they already used discs. Okay. Uh, Going to have to use something to pry that open. Where's my um, Swiss Army knife? Let's see. Moving parts by Matchbox. Always exciting. Uh, it says Turbo 3000 on the metal engine. So get some detail in there. Again, nothing really special, but you know, nice weight to it and all that good stuff. Also, lots of details embossed in the in the back side. Sweet. Next up, the Dodge Caravan. In case you're wondering what this says in Dutch, we'd like to see you back. That's what it says. Again, if you want to read it, freeze the frame. We got the 19, 
84 Dodge Caravan chrome base so we get a chrome front end and a chrome bumper in the back so it's got the uh, green and yellow stripes on the side that were typical for a BP that's uh, same as their logo plastic sliding door that um, yeah <laughs> really comes unhinged very easily um, as you can see it's got um, the the roof piece needs to sit a little bit higher up so it doesn't come uh, unhinged like that. But anyways, you get the picture, got a red interior, also a disc for a steering wheel. Needs a clean, but other than that, I think it's pretty okay. It's got a little bit of a packaging rub on the mirror, but it's not that bad. And the chrome still looks nice. Then we've got the Lamborghini Countach. Again, here's the text on the back. Metal on metal, LP500S. the older style wheels on there suspension metal wing on the back number 15 all over the vehicle and the BP logo cool and the Mercedes-Benz AMG <clears throat> the uh, Porsche is missing from this set not sure if there was uh, more vehicles than that, but I know there's kind of a black or very dark gray Porsche in this set, and that was not there. So, don't have that one. Obviously, Porsche is always going to be popular, right? So, it's 500 SEC, uh, Metal Flake gray base. And then the non-metal flake red body with a lot of uh, paint rash, unfortunately. Also got those green and yellow stripes and gray headlights, part of the base, and clip into the front there. Okay, also got a few uh, lo loose vehicles uh, at um, the MCCF swap meet. This is a Siku, a uh, Mercedes truck, rig, lorry. Some details in the front, tampoed. So the black part that you see is yellow, is plastic. It's got a few holes in there. It was only one euro or so. Not going to complain about that. And this goes down and then you can... Uh, Transport the vehicle on there. Red interior. Oh, nice one. And from that same seller, also for one euro, this majorette in 1 to 100 scale. American style rig. Also a tow truck. This is as far as it goes, unfortunately. Smokestacks. So the red part is metal and everything else is plastic. Here we got that uh, Norif Minijet Volvo F89 again, made in France. This time with the kind of a crane on the back. So what you see is blue is metal and then what is gray is plastic. Uh, unfortunately, it is not complete. It does slide out, but the hook that's supposed to be in there is missing, unfortunately. This was two euro, so cheaper than the, the one I found in France. Um, this kind of swivels all around, like that. Uh, it's, otherwise, it's in great condition after a good clean. And uh, when I uh, was cleaning it up, I discovered something. 
I was like, what are these things here? You see these? Well, you can fold these out and have these kind of uh, supports where you rest the vehicle on or you lift it off the ground so that it's not sitting on its wheels when you're using the crane. Uh, I tried it. Unfortunately, they want to come up all the time, these things. So it doesn't really work very well to actually use them. But I think it's amazing for something that is, I don't know, maybe 40 years old, that uh, they're still on there and they still function. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. So, of course, you use these when you're operating the crane and you wouldn't use these like one of uh, our customers uh, driver did and uh, you have got weight on the hook and the suspension of the vehicle I'll uh, push these back up click 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 the suspension of the vehicle is going to tilt towards that side and then eventually the crane is just going to fall over and that actually happened to one of our customers uh, vehicle yeah, that driver was fired, all right, as you can imagine. A very nice Hot Wheels Porsche 911 GT2. This was two euro. Um, a bit much for a loose car, but you know, if it's that this nice, very nice color combo, the blue with the, the tan interior. Uh, it's beautiful, really stunning. And like the rims too, yeah. And the clear glass, so you get uh, uh, a proper looking set of headlights there. Porsche logo, sweet. This one is a pretty special one. This is a Matchbox school bus. This is a um, USA exclusive club model. And the uh, Kind of an uh, army livery. A uh, seller was asking for, I offered him three and he has accepted. So that was uh, very nice of him. Um, sweet. I've only seen this once before at the uh, Namak in, uh, in a box, kind of a generic box it was in, just the size of the vehicle. And the uh, seller was asking five. I didn't want to pay that. Don't care about the box anyway, so now I got it without a box for three. Sweet. Government property. Awesome. Nice addition to the box, uh, to the box, to the bus collection. <laughs> Jeez. Ford F550 Super Duty. Uh, only one euro from uh, that same seller at uh, Namak where I bought the Matchbox uh, Super Kings car transporter from. You know, the guy that was doing clearance, he had some Matchbox mainlines, a lot of fancy cars and, uh, you know, didn't find much. Just this one. Uh, I'll open this up in the fire engine video. Blondie was also there. Got this uh, moving parts. 36 Ford Sedan Custom. This uh, moving parts set has grown on me. At first I was not really that impressed, but you know, the stuff they put out nowadays is uh, is really nice. So I'm grabbing uh, one of some of the older ones every now and then when I can find them for the price I want to pay for them. Some silver details. The um, fenders are plastic, part of the interior. Bumpers are part of the base. So, tempo wise, not a lot of details, but you know, the ones that make it stand out definitely are there. Dirt doors seem to work pretty well. Well, I shouldn't have said that because this one won't open. <laughs> okay, but this one does. And also got a five pack 
at the, uh, the MCCF swap meet. Um, only five euro was already cut open. I did not do this. So I thought that there was probably some vehicles in here that were swapped out with others. But I've had a I've had a five pack before, also with fire engines that ha that was done too. That one that one was resealed. Um, but you know there were good vehicles in there, so I didn't mind. And there's good vehicles in here, so I didn't mind either. But when I came home, I discovered that uh, these are all the original vehicles that were in the set. Unfortunately, there's something else that has been uh, done to them. Uh, by the way, this is a uh, 2011 Fire 5-pack, in case you were wondering. So, this is the reverse base. 2006 Ford Crown Victoria, which is a really cool casting. It's got the light bar on top. Separate piece, that's awesome. Looking good, but when you look in the front, you see someone painted the grill black and did not do a really good job on it. So that's unfortunate and same with the rear painted some red tail lights on there very sloppy. So that's a bummer. If someone knows how to uh, how I can remove this without removing the the clear coat or the paint of the actual vehicle please let me know. Um, yeah lens headlights clear Again, looking very good, like that. Um, this is the one that has the police computer on the inside. It's got the box of donuts on the passenger seat. I got to show you that, right? There you go, box of donuts. There's a the computer and there's um, some handcuffs on the driver's seat. So that's a really cool interior. This could be a Rio Sada casting because that's the, kind of the cool stuff he did. So other than that, except besides the paint paint stuff, this is a really nice one. MBX Fire District Command. Kind of a generic livery, but that's okay. Second one, the Fire Engine of 2006. Uh, this is the original casting. Uh, we will uh, look at another one, the retooled one later on. Matchbox County Fire Department. So the ladder goes up. Uh, it does not swivel. Just goes up and down like that. Generic uh, casting Matchbox original, but it's a nice one. I like it. You got the Ford E350 Ambulance 2009 model year. This has a metal base, unpainted, also makes for a metal front end. Again, we have some coloring going on here, unfortunately. Metal cabin and a plastic um, backside. So lots of paint on this. Providence Fire Department, Department, <laughs> Department. Um, so seems to be a licensed livery on this one. Again, some extra paint on the back, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but uh, other than that, it's a cool one. The utility truck, also 2006 model, originally. Fire tanker, so you get a plastic base, metal cabin and a plastic tanker. So there's not a lot of metal on this one, but they made a lot of these different ones. And then the second one that is uh, not been tampered with, you know, this one also was not been tampered with, luckily. So there's two good ones in there. International Workstar Brush Fire Truck 2007 with um, the original casting, meaning that what you see is a white, well, the bottom part here and this back part is metal. Top part has always been plastic of this cabin. Uh, but nowadays it's all plastic on top and just a metal uh, piece on the base. So yeah, sweet casting. 
uh, generic livery, forest tree, but cool. And then was when I was uh, walking towards the exit, uh, I thought I had seen everything. Um, I passed by the last table before the exit, and next to that table there was a uh, box, like kind of a, like a you know, banana box or whatever you call it. That I had a bunch of Noref in there, and uh, this one was what kind of drew me to it. This one that caught my attention. So apparently, uh, this lady was selling uh, the collection of her. Uh, deceased boyfriend and um, he was a Peugeot collector so he had all kinds of uh, uh, Peugeot dealership Norevs for sale well in his collection and she uh, sold them for two euro each for the box ones and one euro for the loose eventually I got this one for free because I bought uh, 15 box ones with her did not take the, um, the concept cars, but I took all the licensed vehicles. Well, the concept cars as licensed too, of course, obviously, but you know, the real existing vehicles, I mean. So this is the Peugeot Boxer um, pickup truck or Ute uh, in Europe. Uh, these are just basically um, vans that have a chassis and a cabin. That's how they come out of the factory usually. And then somebody else puts uh, something on the back. This possibly could also be have come from the factory like this, but um, also could have been a um, someone who builds uh, stuff on top of these. So, of course, Norev, so lens headlights, nicely detailed in the front there. Um, this is a plastic bumper part of the interior and a plastic bed. Uh, metal chassis, and then what you see is blue is metal. This thing opens up, it doesn't open very far usually, this opens up much further, but I don't want to force it. Some red for the taillights and a plastic base, but still has suspension. Then let's get to uh, this one that caught my eye. A Peugeot Expert. So metal on metal suspension. Got the crazy trailer hitch thingy on there again. Maybe these came as a Peugeot assistance vehicle. Opening plastic doors in the back. Uh, left needs to be closed first and then right and then they are probably closed. Separate piece for the light bar. It's got the um, um, the star of life on the door and on the hood or bonnet. Nicely detailed uh, headlights there. Look at that. That looks so realistic. It's got seats in the back so you can't really put a stretcher in there but you know as I said before, one interior for all vehicles, so window vans and panel vans and, you know, everything they make out of there. Could have to put it back because the table is getting too crowded. Then we got the bipper, beep beep. So these are all Peugeot, right? So I don't have to repeat that. These are all Peugeot. Uh, I think most of them will be three inches. So no, probably not much true 164 in here. There's a few that are I'm a little bit doubtful about. Plastic base, it's got suspension. These all have plastic tires. Uh, all metal bumper on this. Not sure what the significance of this deco is. No opening parts on this one. It's got a nice way to it because it's, you know, it's a panel fan. You know, it's a very small little van. Then we start with the passenger vehicles. We start with the, the smaller ones and then go to the bigger ones. This is the 107. Uh, 2011, 2011, sorry. I was talking Dutch to you there. 2011 date, so probably 2012 release. This is a 2012 model. Uh, and 
well, I will have a sip of water while you guys look at this. So we got a uh, metal flake purple, nice authentic rims, a little bit of suspension, nicely detailed front and back. It's got a completely glass hatch in the back. The 1007, so not the same as the 107. This uh, had a sliding door. So this is a sliding door. You can see the rail here. Very unreliable. Metal on metal. Nice details again. And a blue-ish interior, like that. Like that, they spruce these up a little bit because you know it's already black on the outside, you know, boring. So at least that blue interior gives it a little bit of color. I like that. 207 CC, which stands for coupe convertible. Here you can see coupe and convertible. So it had a, a hard metal folding roof, hard top. This is also a black one, plastic base. You get some exhaust detail there. Again, nicely detailed. This roof part comes off like that. A good looking steering wheel and a nice dashboard. So they do an extra effort for the convertibles for sure. And that's how it should be. Other uh, makers can learn from that. So slide it back in. Front part first and then in the back just slides in there. Then we got the 307 CC. Again, you got a picture of the open and closed version. So this is the first gen and then the blue one is the second gen or the facelift, maybe I should call it. Metal on metal. This one has not does not have a window piece. It's a older one. It's a kind of a metallic red. Uh, it's a little bit harder to take off, but it will come off like that. Again, nice interior. Trying to show you, you know, how good it looks. So it's a little bit harder with these darker interiors, you know. When they have a vibrant interior on the outside, they tend to put uh, dark interiors on the inside. And then here's the facelift. Yeah, no picture on this one. So as you can see, different front end. You can skip back if you want to see the difference. Uh, still metal on metal. I still a uh, big hole in the in the back, the window. You saw me take it apart, so I'm not going to do it on this one. It's the same system, probably the same interior too. Then we got a 308 uh, hatchback. In nice metallic blue. Plastic base, but still has suspension. Got the panoramic roof. Lots of details in the front there. Some black 
around the windows on the side and then in the back also nicely detailed. Three hundred eight CC, so the coupe cabriolet version of the previous hatchback we saw. Also the plastic base with the suspension, nice rims, nicely detailed, as we are used to from the rev front and back. It did not very well color match the plastic hardtop with the rest of the vehicle I think but it's got a window piece in the back that's nice and a good looking interior again doing an effort there to make it look good and realistic there you go Here's a, a newer 308, not the newest one, there's already a newer model, so I think this is the previous um, pre previous model and then that blue one we saw earlier was the model before that. Um, no suspension, plastic base, but still authentic looking rims and uh, plastic tires. Does it say the color on there? Uh, this will be uh, Gris Mocha. Let's see, 2013 date on there, so 2014 release probably. Nice. Then we get to the 508 SW station wagon. No date on this box. Nice blue color. This is also already two generations ago, this model. Plastic base, no suspension. Got the panoramic roof also. Very popular on these. Very sleek looking vehicle. And a black version of it. Very common vehicle, company car. This one in black kind of looks like a hearse, but you know, people like that. Why not? Then the next 508, the four door, the sedan, so the previous gen. And a kind of a bluish silver. Still all metal bumpers. It's got a nice way to it because of that. And the same 508, but in black. 2014 date on these, yes. So 2014 model. So the previous one was Gris Hortense, and this one will be, I don't know, one of those black ones. Well, it's this one, Noir Perla Nera. The other one is white. Blanc Macri. Sweet. 
Wait. And then the last one, that's the one I wanted to compare with the Citroën, is the 807 people carrier. Here you see it's got the sliding door, side profile. Different style box, you know, it opens like that. So it also has the metal base and suspension. Some black around the windows. Hatch or lift gate opens up like that. Same interior as the Citroën, I think. So where is the Citroën? It's next to me, didn't put it that far away. So back in the day, Peugeot and Citroën belonged to the same company, PSA. Nowadays they are uh, in a bigger company, Stellantis, with uh, lots of other car makes. Uh, but back then it was just uh, them on their own, basically. Um, so they made a lot of vehicles together and then just put their own badging on there and little different uh, headlights and taillights, as you can see. Um, interestingly, Norf uh, has different hinges on these for the, for the hatch in the back, see? The Citroën has a bigger hinge than the Peugeot, strangely enough. And there's also a little bit difference here in the front. Um, the mirror is pretty much, uh, it's different, it's a little bit different than the, between them. But also this little window here is a little bit bigger on the Peugeot than some is on the Citroën. So apparently these are the real differences on the real vehicles and they they really made a, a different tooling for these uh, these cars so they really put some effort in there uh, if this was green light they just would make a different clip for the front end and just you would see a line here and they would just put another clip on uh, but you know norf doesn't do that kind of stuff they just make a whole different tooling and uh, yeah do it the proper way Got to respect that. That's awesome. Not a very exciting vehicle, but I like to see these uh, these details done right. You know. Then the next event was on Sunday, October nine. Uh, that was the first time this. Um, a swap meet was held also by some kind of an old-timer club. Um, it was in a town called Hill. And um, yeah, let's take a look at what I found there. A few uh, matchbox, uh, sorry, a few Hot Wheels, um, older stuff. I don't come, uh, I don't encounter this that often. Uh, Malaysia base metal on metal. This is the Nissan 300 ZX. Um, it's called the Custom Z officially. Um, this is from 1990. This was two euro. I thought that was kind of cheap, surprisingly. Uh, but when I came home and I opened the door, I saw it was missing the steering wheel. So that's why it was cheap. Also, I'm not that impressed by the interior. You can see the floorboard. I mean, you would never see that on a matchbox. It would have some plastic uh, flooring there uh, back then. And uh, also the casting is a bit, uh, I don't know, squidgy. Is that the correct word for it? It's got the lens headlights, but you know, the newer one they did recently is so much nicer, so much more proportionate and uh, correctly styled. It's kind of a weird one, but you know, I'm glad to have it. I have very few um, older Hot Wheels, so uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to have uh, something like that. Uh, and then this one, it's, these were both sold by um, Datsun Man. He's, uh, he's a guy that owns a lot of one-to-one uh, -one scale Datsuns. Um, I don't know how many he has, but uh, maybe 10 or 15, I'm not sure. 
Uh, he also had this uh, Hot Wheels Metal Fill Up with Shell thing. Came from the United States, so probably was handed out at uh, Shell uh, fuel stations, I guess. This was a little bit more expensive, three euro, but you know. Uh, that was, uh, I mean, I was willing to pay that because of uh, the car that's in here. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Makes for a, an interesting story. So his son went to the United States and bought a whole bunch of these. And he had like six of them left. And they sold really quickly, you know. Uh, which, you know, it's not surprising because it's kind of a special item. Um, many will keep it in the baggie, but of course I won't. So this is just a uh, printed piece of paper. Uh, it's printed the same on both sides. So a little bit amateuristic, but you know, it does, uh, does what it needs to do. It's got the Ziploc baggie. So the car will probably be a little bit dirty. So uh, what we have here is a Datsun 200SX and this was in the 1983 The Hot Ones. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, packaging rub it seems so probably will have some damage. Uh, that's okay. Uh, it's got an opening hood, bonnet. Not sure if I uh, want to force it. You know. Uh, it's got a metal engine underneath there. Not a lot of detail, well, some detail cast into the metal, but uh, nothing tamper-wise, obviously. Uh, click. So yeah, interesting vehicle. It's got a plastic bumper, part of the interior. Then everything else, uh, except for the interior and the bumper, is metal. Cool. Nice one. Like those rims. Mm. Then I got this one from uh, this seller, Art Toys, the model car specialist. And this is his uh, website if you want to check it out. So um, he usually is uh, present at um, at uh, old timer events where he sells uh, diecast cars. So since this is kind of uh, an old timer club that was organizing this, he was there too. So I don't see him that often because um, I don't go to that many old-timer events. But uh, once in a while I do and then I encounter him there. Uh, originally 16 euro, 65% off is 5 euro and 60 cents. So this is a uh, BMW Z8 by AutoArt. Here's the, uh, the barcode with the model number. So I did not have this casting yet. And that's an okay price for that. There you go. So we've got a plastic base. But um, this part, I don't know, is this plastic too? Okay, so it seems like the base is partially painted silver and partially just uh, black. 164 BMW Z8, it says. Gateway Global is the uh, parent company, uh, Auto Art. It's got a really nice stance. It's got plastic tires, but authentic rims. Uh, no details here on the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the grill. We'll have to drink something again. Sorry about that. It's, I don't know if it has lens headlights that are tempoed or if these are part of the metal body. They seem to be lenses and then painted on, but I'm not sure. Either way, the tempo is not uh, very good looking. Very nice tiny BMW logo. Uh, indicators are done. The grills are painted black. Very nicely detailed. No details on the side. That's a bit unfortunate. 
but you know for the money i paid it's okay you know but i guess for the original price it's kind of expensive bmw logo again very tiny z8 printed underneath but very hard to see on the silver and then a lot of red paint on the back um, for all the different lights a little bit of an hint of an exhaust there but you know not really impressive got these rollover things here and then a um, very authentic looking steering wheel i hope you can uh, see that a little bit of extra light that is uh, how that steering wheel looked like all in all a yeah, nice looking interior definitely uh, worth looking at Sweet, yeah, very pleased with this. And another seller, a Dutch seller, by the way, was uh, selling uh, Matchbox mainlines, amongst other stuff. He had a bunch of them. Uh, unfortunately, I did not find much uh, uh, that I didn't have, but this one I did not have. Two and a half euro, he was asking, but if you bought five or more, you got them for two. That's a good deal. Audi R6 Avant. Did not have this red version. I got another red version from Stars of Cars, but did not have this one. Uh, I'll open this up in the um, Station Wagons video. 2007 copyright on this. The Volvo V60 Wagon I do have. I opened it up in the Volvo video, but uh, yeah, I wanted an extra one. Because, uh, you know, you can never have too many Volvos. This one I did not have. Volkswagen Transporter Cab. The first release. Look at that. To find it for this cheap, uh, that's extraordinary. I've never seen this uh, cheaper than 3 euro. It's got stuff in the back. So there's also a version without the stuff in the back. Cool. I will open this one up in the uh, non-US pickup truck video. Hazard Squad with the metal body. Well, most metal, mostly metal. The white part is plastic, just like the uh, we saw on the um, on this one here. Also got the plastic uh, roof piece, but that's okay. Uh, nowadays, this is a completely plastic body casting, so uh, don't go. I will buy these if I find them, the metal body ones, but the other ones I will not uh, grab anymore as a single. I have a few from nine packs and uh, five packs and stuff like that, but other than that, I don't buy them as a, in the singles anymore. This is a fire department of New York licensed. So that's cool. So even if it's a uh, Matchbox original, at least it's got uh, some licensing going on here. Uh, 2015 copyright on this and this one Freightliner M2106 I think this is the first release not sure um, yeah Freightliner licensing so these will be opened up in the fire engines video and this was a total surprise I already have this I got this from David Johns of Twice Diecast this is a US exclusive 1963 Cadillac Ambulance, American long card. I've never seen this here before and definitely not for this cheap. 2010 release, so I had to grab another one. I'll probably open up this one in the ambulance video. Um, but yeah, so we'll have one in the station wagon video because basically that's what it is, right? It is a station wagon turned into an ambulance. Now I have one in the ambulance for you. Cool. And he also had a few five packs. I only picked up this one. Uh, he had another fire um, five pack, but had too many plastic uh, stuff in there. You know, plastic body vehicles. Uh, this was 10 euro. Uh, got it for eight, so one euro and 60 cents each. This is the 2015 Fire 5 pack. So we're going to open this up because um, 
I'm not going to open this these five packs up in the uh, fire engines video because that doesn't work for those videos. The top one and the bottom one were also in the main line. So this one, this one were also in the main line. So let's look at these first. So this is the Pierce Dash Fire Engine. Very shiny chrome base. So the chrome makes for the bumper in the front and the grill, and then this middle section here, and then this back section. And then this is metal, this is metal, and this is again a plastic uh, top part of the cabin, like we've seen on the several other fire engines, but that's okay. It can, uh, it can do some really variations like that, and they don't have to paint it white, and then they can put a red part on there and then it's an all red cabin it works well I'm okay with that you know other than that we get a nice amount of metal I mean it's not super heavy and this is also plastic on top but it's good enough I can live with it uh, yeah totally okay with that and then here's the other one the other main line the blaze blitzer so what you see is red is metal so again nice amount of metal so the Matchbox original, but looks good, I think. I like these, uh, these shutters. They have some texture on them. The back also. That's cool. Some letters on top and stuff. Yeah. Dig it. And then we got the ones that are uh, exclusive to the set. Fire Engine. So this is a retooled version. So still has the ladder that goes up it doesn't swivel um, what has changed in comparison with the original version well it's gotten shorter in the back so you can see there's less metal behind the rear wheel than is on the original one there's a trail hitch on the original one but this uh, still there but it's you know it's visible now because the, the doesn't have that much overhang anymore the um, ladder part is moved forwards and that way it sticks out in the front whereas the original it did not stick out in the front so it's the same length of the ladder but it sticks out now because it's moved forward that's basically the most important change on the vehicle and of course the grill that is also part of the plastic base now there was metal before that just a plastic bumper and you had lensed headlights Apparently, did I notice that before? That's cool. So yeah, that's basically uh, the difference between the two. Most of it, I mean, there might be some more differences. See, there's a little bit more plastic on uh, in this part here. Uh, you know, but all in all, still a metal body. It's still uh, used like this nowadays. So as long as we can get a metal body, I can um, can live with these little changes. Generic livery on a uh, Matchbox original fire engine. You got the uh, 1963 Mac B model fire engine. Well, what you see is yellow is metal, so nice amount there. Cool, lots of details in the tempo on the side like that. You know the wooden ladder and stuff. That's awesome. The hoses, yeah, that's cool. That's really nice. Would have been nice to have a blue window piece. We got a blue cherry on top, but yeah, it's okay. And some details in the plastic there. I'm not sure what that all is. And we end with the Fire Chiefs car, the 1956 Buick Century Police. Cool casting. Not a lot of releases of this one, so I'm glad I have this one. Um, might have most of them now. Also, thanks to uh, David Johns of Twice Diecast who uh, hooked me up with a few. Smoked window piece. Should have been a blue one, but again, it's okay. Sweet. Now, before we end, let's take that, uh, that car transporter. It's boxed in with the uh, Norev boxes. Get over here. Yeah, there it is. 
so I've put some cars on there already uh, while I was uh, you know talking about them so got the Beamer here uh, have we got some more matchbox from that era sure I think uh, these are possibly also from that era I don't think the yeah the thing is not all the way back now it is you can you guys can see right okay so let's put the um, the Lamborghini on there it's kind of a car that seems to belong on there and well maybe the Datsun otherwise there's going to be too much red all kinds of different wheels on there too okay like that and then we can slide this back on well I'm putting matchbox on there but these are majorette wow you see after an hour and a half almost filming I get really stupid you know <laughs> I don't have any majorette to put on there that's the only majorette I got but well, I've got some trucks but that doesn't work well this will have to do I'll put some on the, uh, the base thingy here you know and then it's easier to slide that on when there's not a car on there but technically you could see like that it's a nice one I'm playing with my toys here look at that let's take this off and lower the bottom section at uh, the top section so just just goes like that and keep the cars on there very well you see they stay on there and there you go thanks for watching bye